Hey, it's Ark from Firearms Nation. And today, Nation, we're going to be talking about weak side shooting. Or is it support side? Or is it reactive side? Or is it just the other side? I got a Facebook message from Michael Slay who asked, can you do a video on offhand shooting? Offhand. And how to deal with the sight alignment while shooting offhand. I'm a right eye, right handed shooter. See, I missed offhand. You had weak side, support side, reactive side, other side, offside. Okay, we're talking about shooting with the hand other than what you normally shoot with. So here I have a SIG P320, and as you can see, it is empty. When I think about shooting offhand or the other side, whichever way you want to call it, lots of things come into play. We normally grip our gun with two hands, nice good grip, wrapping it around, 360 degree coverage, clamshell, whatever you want to call it, 60-40. We get a nice good grip to help with mitigating the effects of the recoil. The gun wants to go up, we're pushing against it. As soon as we take away one hand, now we're gonna have trouble because the gun is gonna wanna go to the path of least resistance. It's gonna go, if you're holding it in your right hand, it's gonna go up and to the left. If you're holding it in the other hand, it's gonna go up and to the right. So we wanna do things that are gonna help us get more successful shooting one-handed, weak-handed. If we look at how we grip, our strength from our grip comes from these two fingers the pinky finger and the ring finger. Don't ask me what all the other fingers are. We get our strength from there. If you think about holding a hammer, or when we grip the hammer, the, the part with the thumb, if you know anything in martial arts, that is gonna be the weak spot. That's where we, we, we lose our grip. But we get a lot of grip from down here. So when we start gripping onto the gun, I'm gonna grip harder with these two fingers. So I'm gripping harder with these two fingers. I'm also concerned about movement in the gun. I'm always concerned about that movement when I'm pulling the trigger, having any type of leverage that, that ruins a good sight picture as I pull. So I'm concerned about this. So what I do is I'm gonna take my thumb and almost like a pincher, and I'm going to close it together, close it from behind together like so. So now I got the grip down here and I got the grip there. So I have my grip and now I'm ready to shoot. We gotta come up now with some other way to have that support side grip. So if I'm normally holding the gun, I got that 60% uh, on the other side doing counter pressure. Well now, we're gonna get that control from our shoulders and our forearm because we have nothing on the other side. So there's two ways that are acceptable that work really well. The first way is the canted method. So I'm canting the gun. I'm not going all gangster, you know, all gangster, you know, what up? Probably not that funny. I'm not going all gangster. All I'm doing is, this is my normal, I'm gonna try and get on there. This is my normal straight grip. All I'm doing is rolling it probably about 30 degrees. Rolling it, yeah, about 30 degrees. So here's 12 o'clock. Here's no, about 25%, 25, all right. So around between the two and the three, if we're looking at the clock, all right? What this does, it's almost like an index finger pointing. What that does is it drives, and I'm keeping my arm straight. It drives all that pressure into that shoulder. And that shoulder is gonna be helping me control the recoil. No matter which way you do it, you need to be leaning forward, all right? So that's gonna help you as well. Oh, I'm gonna be leaning forward on the side that has the gun. So when it rocks me back, I can push back into it. So I'm here in this position, and it's a good position. The other way that seems to work really well and something that I like to do is here's my, my normal grip. If I drop the gun, this is what I'm left with. All I'm gonna do now, if I'll use my weekend, all I'm gonna do now is kind of bring the elbow slightly down, right? This is how I'm normally shooting, I just take it down and I'm gonna just bring that elbow, roll it slightly down so I'm engaging those muscles in that forearm, 
all right? Almost like it's one of those direct points. I'm pointing like this, I'm pointing like that. So right here, I got a lot of strength in that forearm, right? Bam, right there. So now I'm just right on that gun. I'm leaning in. I got that good solid point going on and there's a lot of strength and this is coming more from the forearm, less from the shoulder. And what this does is it creates like a little shock absorber and I see less movement of my sights when I shoot that way. Let's talk about sights. Right? One of the questions Michael had was about sighting. Well, if I normally shoot with my sights straight in front of me at 12 o'clock and now I roll the gun so it's between two and three. That is completely different from all the hundreds and thousands of repetitions that I've done dry and live fire. Completely different. I'm throwing something new into the equation. It's gonna make me more conscious of what I'm doing, whereas when we're shooting, we wanna be in that subconscious state. That's a drawback. Drawback number two, when the gun is going to recoil, all right, the first shot is gonna be dead on because there's no recoil. But then the recoil, instead of coming straight back, it's gonna roll. It's gonna roll over to the path of least resistance. What that does, I have to wait. And if I'm shooting fast, the first shot's gonna be on, the second shot's gonna go probably off the shoulder of where I'm aiming. Versus if I'm straight on like this, the recoil is gonna be straight back like I'm normally used to. Once again, I'll be able to see my sights better get more shots on target at a quicker pace. When it comes to aiming, I still do the same thing with my eyes. I am aiming and looking at the front sight with both eyes. I'm not trying to do this thing, I see people do that. I'm not trying to do that because I normally don't do that. Remember, we wanna do stuff that we normally do because that's gonna be the easiest thing for us to remember. So I just keep the uh, sights right between my eyes and if ever I feel like I'm losing it, I'll just bring the sight up, focus on the front sight, bring it back down. It takes some repetition, guys. It takes doing this over and over, dry and live. But try it. Try the canted method, and try the aggressive straight pointed method. I don't know what they call it. I'm curious to see if you have a different method of doing it. If you do, leave a comment down below and explain why it works or why it doesn't work. And if this is your first time here, hit subscribe. It's very important to hit subscribe because that way you will be notified of the new content. There's all this stuff going on with YouTube right now that it doesn't show you the new stuff when, when it's out there unless you subscribe for sure. This is Arik from Firearms Nation. Join the nation.